Tell us about how the market is trading. Of course, it was up yesterday. Hello, I can, I can hear you very well. Sorry. Yes, Baba, I, I was asking, can you give us an update on the market? I know it was up significantly yesterday. Yeah, and right now, as I speak, the market is on a very strong showing. On the gains of yesterday, the market closed at 1.84. And uh, right now, the market is still early in the day, though, but we're doing plus, plus 2.8. Point plus 2.8. And um, Zenith Bank is leading the gainers pack right now with about 50 cover gain, closing, uh, I mean, uh, running on 14.40, as well as um, um, Presco and First Bank with um, 11 naira points, 11.10. All right, so clearly we're seeing an uptick, an extension of the uptick from yesterday. But would you say that we have seen a flaw to the bear run? Obviously, the market was Sorry, down. I can hear you very faintly, please. I can hear you very faintly, please. Can All right, I was up? asking that, do, would you say that we've seen a flaw on the bear run of the market? You know, the market came down about three, three sessions in a row before it went up yesterday. Yeah, um, the, 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 the truth about the matter is that uh, if you look at most of the stocks, um, they are actually trading below their intrinsic value. Um, First Bank with a Q1 212 of about 12, 24 billion um, should be trading well over its, its price right now. The same goes for GTB with um, a Q1 of about 12 billion as well, you know, um, about, sorry, about 19 billion should be trading well above its um, price of about 15.70. I think right now that uh, the, you know, the, the investors are looking closely on these stocks on the strength of the fact that we're expecting their Q2 results in a couple of weeks' time from now. So I think there's still room for um, um, on bargain hunters to come in and the market to move on further. Okay, you've highlighted the value the market is offering right now, but let's talk a bit about some of the companies that just got listed, in particular Fortis Microfinance. We know the, the price was up yesterday when it got listed. What's the showing today? Yeah, um, for Fortis, Fortis Microfinance Bank that was listed yesterday, of course, like um, we're all aware, it closed at 525, you know, doing maximum. But as I speak, um, I think um, the investors are looking at the, the figures very closely. They're looking at the, the, the bank very closely. Um, the volume are not coming up right now. Um, it's still at 525. I think um, as the market closes for the day, we begin to see transactions coming up on, my, on Fortis Microfinance. All right, what about CNI leasing? Um, maybe another turnaround story similar to Transcore. We see the company uh, reporting full year results, strong, uh, well, definitely strong profitability when you're coming from a loss. But give us a sense of how the market is reacting to that result. And we know the price is at 50 copper right now. Yeah, uh, for CIN leasing, uh, it's still at par value as we speak. Um, the result, no doubt, is very, very remarkable, coming from a loss figure of 109 million to about 189 million. And I think, again, um, you know, core investors are looking at the company, CIA leasing. It's the only listed CIA leasing we have on the exchange, and not having recently acquired about 85% holding in, in Ghana CIA leasing. I think it's a company of choice, and um, it's going to go places. We're going to see the, 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 the share price firming up as we go down the week and go down the months. All right, let's look at the broader market coming back to the volumes traded over the last few sessions. We know they've been pretty low. Is, is, are we seeing that play out again today? Yeah, yeah, um, the, the volumes are pretty low, and that probably, you know, in part is attributable to the fact that, you know, people are being cautious in selling their holdings. You know, it, you, you need to know what you have and where it's likely going to go to for, for you to be able to sell your stock. I think, like I said earlier on, the stocks are trading mostly on their intrinsic value. So people are actually holding on back to their stock in view of the fact that once the result comes out, the, 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 the Q2 result comes out, the price will firm up and they're probably willing to decide whether to sell or not. So are, are you saying you're expecting volumes to pick up significantly next month when we begin to see those results? Yeah, volume obviously will come with price. Volume will come with price. You know, once the, price, once the stocks are attracted to enough, people will come to sell the stocks. All right, good point you're making there. Okay, um, any stocks right now that you're looking at, do you think we should be keeping our eyes on, even if it's for a short-term trade? Sorry, I can uh, sorry, I can barely hear you, please. Do you think there's any stock out there that we should keep our eyes on for a short-term trade right now? Any suggestions? Yes, um, uh, like I've always maintained, um, First Bank is a stock that you could put your money on and go to sleep. Um, GTB, Zenith Bank, Access Banks, They've, they've recorded a very, very strong uh, Q1 showing. 
And uh, on the strength of their full year result of Q2, uh, Q4 2011, where they paid a um, very remarkable dividend for, for, that, for the year, I think um, you can keep your money on those stocks and, 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 and the rest are sure that your money will work for you. Uh, we're looking at equally the conglomerates as well as food and uh, various sectors. These are sectors that you could put a lot of money and you can go to sleep and be rest assured that your money will work for you. Okay, to what extent would you say the decline in oil prices is impacting sentiment on the stock market right now? We know oil prices are close to an 18-month low right now. Well, um, well th those, those variables are far beyond our control, but I, I must tell you that Given the fact that the, 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 the budget is anchored on $72 per barrel, and we've seen oil skyrocketing from $100 per barrel to about um, 70, 76 It's actually right about now, 91 it's right now. Yeah, I think it, it, it gives a lot of co um, concern. You know? um, basically, it simply means that the federal government will have less money to, to, you know, to fund their, their budgetary um, expenditures. Um, by implication as well, the banks will have less money in terms of VAT allocations and all that. And that probably in the long run could shut up interest rate and exact undue pressure on our market. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that uh, sooner or later the, 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 the crisis in, the, in Iran as well as um, the Eurozone um, on block probably could you know, you know, help up, stem up the, 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 the tide in the fall in uh, oil price.